I wanted a place to store the wrenches for my router and the bits for my CNC mill one. So I downloaded the electronics bracket that they offer and modified it in Tinkercad and I'll show you step by step how I made this on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Rather than start from scratch, I downloaded this CNC Mill 1 version 2 electronics enclosure. It clamps over the wood fine, so I'm just going to bring that into Tinkercad and modify it. I downloaded that STL file and then I went to Tinkercad and imported it just by grabbing it from my downloads and dropping it into the import. And it imported it just fine and I have the full bracket here with the clamps on the side for the electronics. So I need to get rid of that. I just really want the basic clamp that goes over the wood. So I'm going to use a hollow box here or a hole and chop off the end of this guy. Get it in position, group them together, and now I get rid of that whole end. And now I want the rest of this, which is just the clamp itself. So all this part for holding the electronics, I don't need it. So I'm going to do the same thing. A uh, whole box, position it so it's just going to take off everything but the back bracket and group those together and now I have the beginnings of my bracket. So the first thing I need to do is add a bracket to hold the wrenches and this will have a couple of slots to hold the two wrenches for the router. So I bring in a block, line it up on the end and then I'm going to stretch it out so it matches the width of the existing bracket. Now, just to verify, I'm going to bring in a ruler and then check the dimensions of the bracket and then make sure mine are the same, and they are. But now I want to do the same height, so I'll look at the height of the bracket and then make my box the same height just by typing it in. Now they're exactly the same size, and I'm ready to combine these guys. Now, what I think I'm going to do, actually make it a little thinner here, just so it looks a little better, and then slide that in, and that looks good. So now I can just group these together and I have the beginnings of my bracket. So now I just need to add some slots. When I measured the wrenches, I realized I needed to make this a bit wider. So I'm going to make it 80 millimeters wide. And then I'm going to bring in a hollow box or a hole box and set it to the dimensions 20 millimeters by 3.5 millimeters and then stretch it out so it goes all the way through and then drop it down. So this slot will go all the way through for the wrench and then I'm going to duplicate that and slide it over holding the shift key so they stay in line and then once I've got those two I'm gonna group those together so then I can grab those and make sure they're centered just by hitting the align tool so I've got those and I can just group them together and now I've got the slots for the wrenches to slide right in the next step is a bracket for the drill bits so I bring in another box set this one to the dimensions that should fit it and then I'm going to actually put the work plane on top because I want to drill some four millimeter holes that'll hold the drill bit. So I bring in a hole cylinder, set it to four millimeters diameter, position it, and then duplicate it. And then position that second one about where I want and then just hit duplicate two more times and it automatically positions them equal. Then I'll grab them all, make those a group, and now I can center all four of them to the block itself using the align tool and do that in both directions so now it's centered in both directions and now I need to drop these guys down but I want to see how deep I'm going so I'll make the block a hole whoops grabbed the wrong one here and let me reset that and now I'll grab the cylinder group and slide it down until it looks good and that looks good and then I'll turn the block back into a solid and then group these together and it'll drill the four millimeter holes now I want this the other side though, so I'm going to turn this 180 degrees and then slide this into my bracket and making sure that I'm all the way over and touching. And the only thing left to do then really is to center this guy, so I'll grab everything, use the align tool, make sure it's centered, it's centered, and now I can just group these together. And I group them together, and there it is. There's my bracket that I know is going to fit the, the wall of the CNC because I used their bracket to start. So now I need to slice it. Before I can print it, of course, I gotta slice it. So I'll drag that file into Simplify 3D and it comes in just fine. And I'll edit the process settings. I'm gonna use my Anycubic Mega i3 printer at 25%, 0.3 layer height, 
no supports temperature is a basic PLA 60 millimeters per second and it's ready so I click prepare to print it slices it and it looks good I don't see any flaws as I drag this thing through so I think we're good and it tells me it's going to take two hours and 50 minutes to print this so I'll save it to my SD card and load it Melt Ink donated some filament to the channel for me to try out they sent me some gold PLA and some clear PLA so I'm going to try the gold for this one we'll see how it turns out Here's where it's going to mount on the CNC mill one, and here's the print. At a 0.3 layer height, this is actually really smooth. The Anycubic i3 Mega did a good job, and the metal ink filaments seem to print really well. And this thing fits nice and solid. It can slide, but it's not loose. So all the dimensions seem good, and the wrenches, they slide right into the slot. So I got the dimensions right, and it printed it right. Now the drill bits, or the cutting bits, they fit in. I can feel a little bit of resistance, so they're not going to easily fall out. And if you're wondering what the red cap is, it just protects the bit from poking me. So I got the dimensions right on all of it. The print came out nice. I'm happy with the results. I probably should have printed it on its side like that. That way the layer lines were against where it's trying to pull apart. So it's not nearly as strong as it could be. And I could have designed this from scratch. That little bit that I left from the original bracket like this, that could have easily been reproduced from scratch in Tinkercad. So I know people will comment about that. But the whole idea was to show you that you can take something off a of Thingiverse and easily modify it in Tinkercad with just a few simple steps. That's what I was trying to show. And to make something useful, practical for what's in your shop. And the metal ink filament, I'm happy with it. It printed really good, it was really smooth. The results, I give it a thumbs up. So if you like this project, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. I got some Tinkercad tips and tricks and some practical prints. And if you want to see more of what's going on in the channel, please subscribe. Click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.